I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and appreciate you spending some time with us today. Last week, or last time, we got to, in, uh, to in, be introduced to Amber, and today we get to talk to Jason Critchlow, her husband, so the other half of the story. Jason, thanks for coming, and appreciate you doing this. Glad and, to be here. Yeah. So where were you born? I was born in Ogden, Utah. You were, huh? Yep. Okay. And uh, lived there your whole life, did you? L lived there the, my whole life. I, I moved all of three miles from home. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, where you are now? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my dad still lives in the same house that I grew up in. Okay. Were you born in the church? I mean, your parents? Born in the church, born in the covenant. Okay. Uh, parents were more married in the Logan Temple. Oh, well, they were. And yeah. then you got married in the Logan Temple. Got married in the Logan Temple. Oh. Kind of a tradition. Amber's parents were married in the Logan Temple as well. Uh, I see. So, uh, and, yeah. And Karen how many and, brothers and sisters did you have? I have two sisters and a brother and a stepsister who lives in San Francisco. Oh, and were you youngest, oldest? Um, I have two older sisters than me, then my younger brother, oh, okay. and, and my stepsister as well. Okay. And would you say you lived a pretty normal Mormon life at the beginning? You know, um, yes and no. Yeah. I, I was raised in the church. I went to church all the way up until I was about 12 years old. Oh, okay. Primary uh, and all that. Primary stuff. and all that. Yeah. I was the last thing I was ordained at that point was a deacon. Oh yeah, at twelve. And then I stopped going to church. Oh. My parents um, got a divorce. Oh. And my mom, as much as she tried to uh, keep it together for me, I, I just, I was done with church at that time. The kids, the other brothers and sisters too, or that. Yeah, you know. That's a really kinda... hard thing when divorce happens at those ages, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a hit and miss with with yeah. my my brothers and well, my I mean, you spend some time with mom and sometimes with dad, probably. Yeah. So you don't. Uh, yeah, and and my dad had had fallen away from the church at that point, and so my mom was on her end she trying was, uh, to trying to keep it yeah. together. Huh? So I went through my teen years. Um, I missed out on all the young men's stuff. And oh, you the, did. You and did. Youth conference and everything. I didn't. I didn't participate in that. Oh. So it wasn't until I was about twenty one years old that. And still a deacon? Were I was you, still or, a deacon. A deacon. Okay. I was a deacon, yep. And, and yeah. uh, at 21 years old, I decided, you know what, I think, I think I'm going to give this church a try. Are you really? Okay. And so... I bet mom was happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Um, uh, so my best friend, we arranged with the, the bishop to get me ordained an elder, and my best friend actually did that for me. Wow. Okay. So I skipped... Uh, <laughs> skipped teacher. Uh, teacher and, and priest. priest. <laughs> okay. And uh, kind of was toying with the idea of a mission, but not really. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't serve a mission. Okay. Um, now, did you know Amber at this time? I didn't know Amber at oh, this time. Okay. We, we we graduated high school together, but that's what our, I. Our that's paths, what she was saying. Our paths never crossed. That is a big school, then, huh? Yeah. 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 Weber High. So how did you actually meet or to get to? Oh, that's right. You, you had set a friend up on that a set up blind date. Yep. Oh, it was a blind date. I didn't yeah. catch that the first time yep. again. And so fell in love almost from the very beginning. Oh, she's a sweetie. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a great heart. Yep. I uh, love you her. You can just tell that she's... Uh, so when <clears throat> you... Well, go ahead. And, so you were active together. You married in the Logan Temple. Yep. So I, I well, Now, I so is this the first time you'd been through the <clears throat> temple? It was, yep. And I, I continued to go to church kind of on my own. Oh, okay. Um, for another year, and that's then I then I met Amber. Okay. And uh, and then we dated. We had a short engagement. Yeah. We we started uh, dating in September. Yeah. And uh, we got married in February. That sounds about like me and Carla, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, this is it. I don't need to wait any longer. Let's get this done. You know. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so we went. We went through the. I had our endowments out, taken out the same day together. Yeah. 
Um, and then a week later you got married? And a week later we got married. What did you think of the temple? You know, I was... Uh, Were you prepared for it? I wasn't prepared for it. Yeah. I was nervous. Yeah. Um, they, they, you know, they don't talk about what's going to happen in the temple. No, because you're not supposed to talk about it outside the temple. So. Right. And so I, I was a little overwhelmed, yeah. to tell you the truth. And there wasn't internet to no. pe- peek in there anymore <laughs> like, like they do now. But No, you know, and, and but in the end, um, it, I felt that it was what I needed to do. And, yeah. and I thought, well, if I just continue to do this, the answers will come. Yeah, that's the way I was. Just fa- just be faithful. Yeah. And you'll eventually figure it out and it'll make sense. And yeah. And, and that's what we did, you know. We we yeah. uh, lived our our LDS life and raised our children in it and How many years? How many years? You say married and an LDS life. Uh gosh, we're coming up on 22 years of marriage and uh so 20 years I guess in the LDS church. Just faithful, active and yeah. Do your thing. You were, what kind? You had some callings, I guess. And had teach, some callings. Did you teach? Um, and... I was, I was in the young man's. Yeah. Um, my most recent calling was a second counselor in the bishopric. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then after that, uh, I kind of started my path out of the church. Yeah. Tell. Of course, that's the interesting <clears throat> part of this transition here. So. You're just going along, and what what happens? Well, you know, I I, I was kind of struggling with some things. Um, I stumbled on, uh, you know, without getting into too many of the historical aspects of the church, but the history is is what troubled me. And uh, the book of Abraham. What were you reading? What were, what drew you? You know, it's hard to hard to pinpoint exactly what it was that. Um, that I was reading exactly. I, I remember I was on the inter- on the internet yeah. and I, I read something about the book of Abraham, and so I looked into that a little further. What did you learn? Well, I learned that the um, Egyptian papyri that Joseph Smith had purchased. Yeah, I know. Um, that I had been told was the translation of the, book the of writings Abraham. of Abraham. Yeah. And come to find out that you know through. Uh, Egyptologists, both LDS and non-LDS Egyptologists, have examined the papyri that was found uh, in the 1960s that they yeah. thought had been lost. Right. So they found some of these papyri, and so they examined them. The church was pretty excited about getting these because yeah. this was going to finally prove that... And it had the facsimiles in them too, right? Yeah, Those yeah. facsimiles and, you know, that Joseph Smith... And if you Smith. look in the Pearl of Great Price, you see those right. facsimiles. And they have identifications of each, what each yeah, one of those Yeah, he tells means. us what they all mean and what right. uh, how they interpret it. And... and come to find out, it doesn't say that at all. Not even close. It's nothing about Abraham. That really struck you, huh? And that, that really, that right there opened the door Wow. for me to start questioning. Yeah, that was one of my biggies. Yeah. I thought, well, first of all, I was on my mission when those papyrus were turned up in 1967. So I don't know how I missed that other than the fact that I was in Denmark. Right. But why I didn't know about it. And then then I learned, okay, they turned it over to Hugh Nibley or somebody to find, you know, to do the research and stuff. and. Yeah, it just seemed okay. Well, we have a prophet, seer, and revelator. Why don't? Why doesn't he look at this <laughs> papyrus? You know, but the fact simply, yeah. But it was just very strange. Yeah. So you know, it was it was kind of a shattering thing for me because um, Joseph Smith was my hero. Really? So you had a you know, strong and, testimony and, of him. And, and I and I loved I loved the church history. I loved I loved everything about it. Yeah. First vision. First vision. You know, not and I only knew of one. First vision. I didn't know of several. I know. That's another one that was a big one for me. Yeah. I mean, I gave that, yeah. That the 1830 vision. account that's found in the Pearl of Great Price, that was it. Yeah, 1820. 18, oh, 1820. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Um, but the, the one that we all well oh, know. Oh, I know. I know. And that you just figure that's it. Yeah. And so did you learn that there were other versions? Yeah, but that kind of came later. Oh, did it? Know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and it just seemed like there was just... But you're saying boom, basically boom, boom. that you just had this sense that Joseph Smith really was a prophet. I mean, you had a good oh, testimony yeah. of the church. I was proud that my ancestor knew him. 
Um, you know, I got... Uh, who was that? Well, Truman O. Angel, uh, the architect of Salt Lake Temple. He's it's my, your... my great, great, great granddad. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, and I was always proud of that. Sure. And, uh, um, and then, you know, on all sides of my family, actually. They, we go all the way back. Oh, my goodness. And so I was always digging into family history and wanting to know who these men were and women. And, and Did you talk to anybody about the Book of Abraham? Did you... I, mean, I didn't, bishop, not for a while. I ended up. Were you afraid to do that? Or? I, was. I was. I do. I was too. I was afraid I was going to affect somebody's testimony. Yeah, I. Well, I was afraid of um, questioning. Oh. Even though I had these internal questions, you were. Afraid I was afraid to, to outwardly express those and to verbalize it. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Anything else come up that was? You no, got I mean, the first vision, and you got the Book of Abraham. I mean, these are foundational kinds of things, right? You know, um, polygamy, polyandry, Adam God from Brigham Young. The list just it just it, it it's it's huge. We yeah. could go on for a long time on that. <laughs> so you were starting to see these things, and again, not talking to anybody. <clears throat> you're just kind of doing self self discovery, as it were, and right. You know, and I I think at this point when I really started to dig in it's when I was starting to express some of these things to Amber and um, what'd she say you know it was hard for her yeah you know she she so just she figured I still yeah and she active, thought right? she said well you I see these things but you're you got to be missing something what did you think when she'd say that you'd think you know it was it was a tough situation to be in because I knew that it was upsetting her, but at the same time, I wanted to I wanted to show her. And you can't ignore what you've learned. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's like, okay, well, I, I'll just ignore that. You just can't say, well, okay, I'm not going to think about that or ignore it. It's there. Yeah. It's out there on the table. Yeah. And so, so you keep sharing little bits with her, and she wasn't happy about those little tidbits. No, but you know what? Amber was really good to me during all of this. She, it wasn't. Patient she and, was. Yeah. Oh. She was letting me follow my path, and and right. she was hoping that I would find something that would have answers to these questions. And so, along those lines, I reached out to um, a man who uh, who's kind of high in the church. Hmm. Um, you don't need to say names. No, I'm not going to. Yeah. But you know, and he was kind enough to talk to me about it. You know, and, and, and what would he say? And he wasn't he wasn't able to put my issues to bed for me, and that's what I was kind of looking for. So you raised the question about the Book of Abraham, and oh yeah, I went. He, we spent some time. We went through it. through all the issues that I was having issues with, and well, what did he say? Just I don't have answers, or well, he confirmed that he says, yeah, you know what you've been reading; those those things are indeed accurate. Um, but, just, but, you know, you've got to look at it from a faithful approach, you know, and like the book of Abraham, um, maybe Joseph used that as a catalyst mm -hmm. instead of yeah, I've heard that. a literal translation. Uh, even though he says, I'm in the process of translating the book of Abraham or the papyrus. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and I also went to my bishop. Um, I sent him an email, the bishop that I served in the bishopric with. Oh, boy. And he and I are good friends. Yeah. And uh, so I sent him an email, and he wanted to talk, of course. And sure. So we visited, and um, and he had no idea what I was talking about. Is that surprising? I mean, it's just it amazing was. how little people know. Yeah. I mean, Mormons know about their own history and doctrine. I, I've learned more about the faith I was brought up in since leaving than I ever knew while I was in it. Yeah. Um, That's true of just... Almost everybody we talk to is yeah. just the same thing. as, And it's not that you're actually looking for stuff to keep piling on, so to speak. You just become more aware of, like you're saying, polyandry. Did you know anything about Joseph knew, Smith marrying? I knew nothing about that. Other men's wives? and I knew nothing about that, and that really troubled me. Yeah. I, I knew about polygamy. Yeah. Um, I, I have ancestors that were polygamous. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. And and I and, and some weird kind of sense, I was almost proud of that because it was gave me a kind of royalty, you know. Isn't that <laughs> funny how we think of that? I yeah. did too. I had a. Yeah, that's funny how we think of that. So, how? Uh, so you you keep going to church with Amber though, or do you kind of quit going? You know, um, and she takes the kids. Two thousand fifteen. <laughs> yeah. I, kind of go off and on. 
but I, I pretty much stopped. Your heart's not in it anymore. No, huh? and, and, and then the more I went, the that, harder it got. That must have upset her, though. Was it hard to listen to testimonies or just talks yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Um, now, did you f sense Jesus in any of this, or was it just the bad know, news, as I at, call it? At the time, so this was, this was my dark period. Yeah. Okay, so I was hopeful agnostic at best. Ooh. And why, I, do you, I, why do you think that? Well, because if the Mormon church isn't true, I didn't think anything could be true. Yeah. And so everything was shattered. Your foundation isn't Jesus, right? It's the church. For me, it was. What? The church. The church was your foundation. That's what yeah. I mean. I always thought Jesus was there. Sure. But it was, it was, it was my involvement in the church yeah. and, and what I needed to do. And, I, and that's another thing is in the church... I, I always felt short. I felt sure. I fell short of what I needed to be doing all the time. I was always falling short. Feeling and man, guilty. I would internalize that. Yeah. Feeling guilty, and beat myself up for that. So, um, when I would, so I, well, I'm going to back up. So we went to when I quit going to the LDS church. It was Father's Day, 2015. Okay. I decided to go check out a Christian church. I went by myself. Okay. How was that? It was a different experience. So I and the the music, the um, everything. The dress, it was a bit of a culture dress, shock for me. The, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't go again for almost a year. Oh. Um, but in that time, uh, that next year, I was trying to find out who who God was, if there was a God. Really? Well, good. For, I mean, you really that's that's yeah, important, especially because I felt like I that, that that was still something. Yeah. And so, um, you know, talking to various people, I, I got to know one of the a pastor in Ogden and um, kind of through guidance through some of them and, and a friend of mine at work who was an ex-Mormon Christian. Really? Um, he, he really helped me. Oh, good. And uh, he, got, he showed me a lot of things, uh, you know, to trust the Bible and directed me towards Christ. And so it was the, in this process that um, I was able to open up. And, and, and so once I learned I could trust the Bible. That's big, isn't it? That's big. Yeah. Because I didn't trust it. Yeah. And so once I learned I could trust the Bible, and then all the evidence that supports the Bible, oh my gosh. Had you known anything about the Dead Sea Scrolls? No. I mean, I heard about them, but yeah. I, didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. And like it proves the Old Testament is just just the way it was supposed it's we yeah, have it just amazing. the way it was it's amazing there wasn't all these changes and yeah yeah and so, the new testament there's manuscripts that support the new testament and why why would god go preserve those records and i believe he did yeah and not preserve something for the book of mormon Oh, you mean archaeology? That kind or of, even the, even the plates? Even yeah, the plates. Anything. We have nothing to support it. I know. <laughs> but we have all of this to support the Bible. Yeah. And I don't think that's a coincidence that we have all this evidence to support the Bible. From well, the, and from the heaven and earth will pass the, away, but my word will not pass away. I right. Mean, that's what the promise in the Bible is. It's amazing. And the amazing thing that I've I, I learned, becoming a Christian, is. This this burden that I was carrying around, while uh, while LDS yeah. of not doing enough. Yeah. Well, I come I come to Jesus every day, a sinner, <laughs> and I'm thankful for what He's offered me that free gift of grace. You know, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, Him alone, no mediator. Oh, and that is such a beautiful it, message. It takes that weight off your shoulders. Like, and that, in turn, you can you can you can love more. You can love better. Yeah, and the pride's gone, and the judgment. Yeah, you know, the way we would judge people, and the, that's, that's another thing. And the burden that, of not, and like you say, of feeling guilty about not doing enough. Right. And you know, in, in in Mormonism, there was a sense of pridefulness. You know, when you'd get your temple recommend, oh, I, I'm good. I got my recommend. I'm worthy. Oh yeah. But really, none of us are worthy. And we, then you find out somebody doesn't have their temple recommend, like, okay, I'm, I'm a little better than you are. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that I, th I thought that way. Well, I, th I think it's just natural. I just think we have a sense of the church is true, and I'm 
doing what I'm supposed to, and I'm proud, and I'm going to be with Heavenly Father because I'm headed to the celestial kingdom. And yeah, and nothing about Jesus, what He's done. It's just all about what I've been doing. But isn't it amazing? I know. It's I, about it's all about Jesus. Everything. It is now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and and I and I'm so in love with that. Well, that's amazing. Well, so how did you get Amber to this meeting that she talks about? Well, so it was this this same uh, pastor in little church in Ogden. And they had and invited. He um, had told me that uh, they were going to have this on uh, on a certain night in the evening. Yeah. So this lady came and spoke. She she was one who also came out of the church. And, and I know her, and she's just a sweetie. I guess we won't mention her name, but she's yeah. just a delight. Yeah, such a sweetheart. Yeah, and, and 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 did you sit there and listen to? It? So you hadn't been really to church and now again yourself for no, a year. No, and so she she blew my mind that evening as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you were learning along with Amber, or oh, at yeah. least what you were hearing. That's what's fun. So Amber and I have been learning so together. much together. What a, I love it. Uh, how how tough was that year though? That was a hard year. Was it? It was a hard year on her, yeah. and it was a hard year on 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 all of us. Yeah. Um, but I was angry. Well, that is one of the reactions, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we're disappointed and we're if frustrated. If I could rewind the clock, I would probably do things a little different. But yeah, what would you do different? You know, I I think I would have tried to to find Christ earlier. But you didn't know you didn't have Him. Right. 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 I didn't, I didn't know. know I didn't have Him. Well, even after I left the, if, after I determined that the LDS Church wasn't true, that's I what, wasn't sure. That's who, what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You're agnostic. I was never agnostic, but it was like, well, I know Jesus. I mean, yeah. I didn't know that I didn't know Jesus, but just, and what I've learned now, like you say, to reading the Bible and understanding the gospel of grace and the sacrifice and the oh, yeah. cross and everything is just... It's everything. Yeah. You know, and I, I think about it all the time. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's such a wonderful message, and I, you know, even Amber was sharing that, the, you know, the burden, your yoke is easy and my, your burden is light yeah. with Jesus. And we didn't understand, I didn't ever understand that as a Mormon. Oh, you know, there were so many I, I things. I never felt that. So many things I didn't understand. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you know, all the answers are there if we just look. <laughs> you know, we don't have to make sure that we work things out in the next life. It all, it, it's, the answers are here. Yeah. Now you've got family still in the church. What? Yeah, so you know I've kind of on my side of the family, it's kind of a mix. I got a I got an older sister who's who's, who's heavily in, you mm -hmm. know, and um, and she she's been good. She's really been actually good to me about this. And uh, my well, mom's great. in, and she's she's been understanding and, and loving. Uh, my, Do they see a difference in you? Do they sense a? Because uh, you're you and Amber were always good people. I mean, you weren't. Yeah, I, I think they've noticed a Running difference. the streets, so to speak. <laughs> I think they've noticed a difference in a good way since um, I, I'm kind of not so angry, as you know, angry as I once was. Oh, as coming Because they, they knew I was angry. Yeah, well, and it's easy to to be that way, yeah. Yeah, but my, uh, you know, my little brother, he's he's kind of a fence sitter, you know. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, He he's not a fence, I shouldn't say that, but yeah. he's just trying to figure things out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the kids? Um, our oldest daughter, she's a returned missionary. Mm -hmm. She's she's a full probably, believing. Probably not happy with mom and dad. Huh? No, and that's that's probably the hardest. You know. Do you think she knows enough to be able to make that decision? You know, I mean, I think part of it is just that the fact that Mormons know so just kind of have a basic limited knowledge about their history and doctrine, and they don't. It's not very deep. That's right. what I mean. I mean, even as a missionary, gosh, it's it's just basically, you know, the message that you're sharing, and it's yeah. The current curriculum know. is is as what's being taught. And, yeah. You know, and then the church is opening up a little bit on some of the. Some I just of the things. wish it would. I mean, if I could, if I knew that somebody had done all the study that I've done, or at least looked at the stuff that I think is important to look at. And then can say, okay, well, I'm sticking with it, and I, I you know, I, that would be good. But yeah. I just think once they start learning and seeing, kind of like you did, you just start seeing things for what they are. You, yeah. You know, see things in a different perspective. And it becomes a, 
much more real. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's a good place to be. Yeah. So you go to you got a good little church. In fact, we went to to the church with you guys. Yep. Uh, it was a sweet, nice little church, and yeah, a, lot great yeah. Pe- a lot of great people. And, we love it. Yeah. Yeah. Getting integrated in there with the people, and yeah, getting to know some new friends. Well, so, what would you say to your dear family and your <clears throat> kids and stuff? You know, um, give the Bible a chance. Trust it. It is trustworthy. Yeah. You know. And, Maybe really find out what. It's behind the Bible, like yeah. you're saying, the archaeology and the yeah, the Dead Sea you know, Scrolls and the manuscripts. Look, look and, at the evidence for it. Yeah, and God didn't preserve that for for no reason. I mean, that was there's it's not a coincidence. We we've, yeah. we've got that Bible and we've got the all these ancient manuscripts to support it, which I think is amazing. Yeah, and, and just to. And I was going to ask you, did you read other books and other things when you were going through your study process? I did. Um, I, I read uh, Fawn Brody's No Man Knows My History, uh-huh. uh, Grant Palmer, uh, Early Mormon Origins. Yeah, Insider's View. Or Insider's yeah. View of Mormon Origins. Yeah. Um, Lynn Wilder's book. Unveiling Brains. Both Carmen Naylor's books. Oh, yeah, that's one Amber yeah. mentioned. We've, we've highlighted like crazy, got all these notes. <laughs> So like you say, you know more about Mormonism and yeah. Christianity, certainly, than you ever did as, as a Mormon. And I love the way that th- those books have been presented. You know, they, they're such a thoughtful, thorough... Yeah, and, and they're honest, and they're yeah. footnoted and stuff. Yeah. I think one of the things, too, I go back to, you were a big, big smile on your face, but the fact that you and Amber have been able to do this together. Yeah. It's so sad when I hear of families that are separating. I mean... You know, your children not maybe understanding what you've gone through and what you've come to know, that's one thing. But I've, I see families that are split, husband and wives that it's, don't. It's hard. That would be hard. I, I've seen it too. I have friends that are going through that. Oh, oh do you? Yeah. Yeah. And so it, It's a hard thing. It's a lot of credit. I mean, sometimes you study and then here you've got Amber that's kind of, I'm sure she studied, and but she's thinking, okay, I've got this husband that's, <laughs> he's got to find his way back here somehow. Right. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to, 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 to do that. And yeah. Kind of come to Christ that way. And, yep. Yeah. Well, Jason, you're just a delight and you've got a wonderful family and wish you the best as you share and set a Christ-like example. That's all you can do, isn't it? Yeah. Love, love them and let the anger go. I mean, it looks like you've done that pretty well. And yeah, you know, it kind of creeps its way up once in a while. But well, you get disappointed. You want to <laughs> fire things up a little bit. But uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, we just keep showing love and and maybe the gospel of grace message to people and the Bible. And truly amazing. Anyway, thanks, Jason. Thank I you. appreciate your time and appreciate it. Appreciate you watching and hopefully you'll take some time to look and. See ya.